All right, so as many of you are currently aware, the games media, the games journalists are gonna do everything that they can within their power to cover for the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and Gamer X and Black Girl Gamers and Melanin Gamers, all these companies that exist to push the racial diversity, uh, you know, LGBTQ mafia agenda, which is nothing more than just saying, hey, there was never enough diversity in these games and this is a problem and so we're going to force it in here, despite the fact that the diversity actually existed naturally, but we're going to tell you that you're not a good person if you don't, you know, make every third character gay or every fourth character black or erase white male characters and heterosexuals completely. So of course, articles like this from Bloomberg, from Jason Schreier came out a few days ago, explaining what happened with the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game, which was notably the largest of the DEI flops in the video game industry. Of course, this game is already basically at the point where they are going to uh, start wrapping up the support for the game they're going to stop making dlc they're going to release it one at a time and when they get to the final dlc that's already been made they're going to just cut off service to the game and it's going to be okay the game is what it is we're not going to be supporting you anymore warner brothers notably took a 200 million dollar loss on the game from rocksteady and of course jason schreier in this article you know mentioned nothing of sweet baby inc or the drama involving cabrutus and dei detected and all this stuff on steam uh, this isn't a shock. Jason Schreier, all the access media, the games journalists, they're going to do everything they can to run covers for Sweet Baby Inc. So that Park Place reported on this a few days later, you know, mentioning that, of course, Jason Schreier decided to point out the issues with the game and what caused the game to be a flop, leaving out Sweet Baby Inc. and all this DEI crap, basically deflecting from the fact that the root of the issue for a lot of the video game industry, now the AAA industry, is this ESG push from all these companies that is forcing the DEI massively ham-fisted and it's just causing a lot of people to say, nope, I'm just going to wait for a cheaper version of the game. I'm going to play an indie game. I'm going to go back and play games that I know were just good games first that didn't have politics crammed into them. So, of course, Jason Schreier went off on some people on Twitter. This guy you know, responded to him posting his article saying, not one mention of the woke tone turning off fans or Sweet Baby Inc. influence. Really, Jason? And then Jason said this article's about what actually happened. Of course, this guy Justin said, right, so it didn't have any effect on development behind the scenes, hiring practices, or turning off millions of fans. Do you not remember this game is what kicked off the Sweet Baby Inc. drama to begin with? To not even mention it is negligent, absent journalism, dishonestly so. To which Jason responded and said, I asked two dozen people who worked on the game what went wrong and not a single one mentioned the word Sweet Baby. You are chasing angry hallucinations created by grifters who make money off your rage. Now, it's really funny that a journalist would say that anybody else is a grifter making money off rage because that is all Jason or anybody else in the video game industry, as far as the media side of it, like Alyssa Mercante, is making money off of. Rage bait, clickbait, uh, you know, hate essentially is all they're spewing and all that's generating their website Kotaku revenue at this point. So Alyssa Mercante, who has been a massive topic of conversation, she has basically made herself the... Anita Sarkeesian of, you know, Gamergate 2.0, as they like to refer to it, responded to this saying, Jason's story was excellent. Great reporting and fascinating shit. I love when a journalist uses words like fascinating shit. Like, really, Alyssa, you are one classy broad. He doesn't mention Sweet Baby because it had nothing to do with Suicide Squad's failure. They didn't even touch the game until it was mostly done, and the team has very little, if any, sway in any game's development. As I outlined months ago in the story that's getting me doxxed and harassed, this is the funniest thing. She claims that all this doxing and harassing is unwarranted. And of course, I'm not saying doxing is warranted. Let's let's cut that right there. I'm not, no doxing, don't dox. But the harassment, you can define harassment however you want to. The fact is she is probably the most volatile, uh, vitriolic, vapid, narcissistic, vengeful person on Twitter, as you'll see pretty soon here. So for her to claim anyone is harassing anyone when she actually went out of her way to DM somebody's wife to look her up, basically internet stalk her to find her and then contact her to try to get the woman to i don't know maybe divorce the guy absolutely insane like, like Alyssa is a complete psychopath but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute too so she works for kotaku kotaku a website that putting out articles like this today after the xbox showcase saying that perfect dark actually looks incredible in gameplay reveal no mention of the fact that every person online is going what the hell's wrong with her face they gave her the buzz light your butt chin but what does Kotaku do? 
spin it as a positive, right? That's who we're dealing with, people who just lie, lie, lie for a living. Also, Master of the TDS pointing out here that Kotaku is having bots in their comment section basically just doing the same shit we've seen before, saying, oh, this is great, this is amazing, this is wonderful, this is great, this is amazing. And it, it just goes to show that Kotaku is another one of these uh, companies that is likely, allegedly, fearful of their longevity and paying for bots just to try to bring attention to their failing website and their social media posts on Twitter. So now you have Alyssa. Alyssa, who has been at the Xbox Showcase, she was at the Summer Game Fest. She's over here, you know, thank you Xbox for sending us here, over here posing with Jeff Keighley from the Summer Game Fest, or I guess this was at the uh, Xbox event, maybe both events, I don't know. Stealing his sunglasses, thinking she's hot shit, right? This is just how Alyssa rolls. These are these games journalists who think the world of themselves and think that you're just pure scum. So, do we all remember Frosk? Okay. Well, there's a reason for this. This famous rant from Frosk from G4, another games journalist, if you will. I'm sure you all remember this. Sexism in gaming. I was ecstatic to be part of something that I, I'm not as bangable as the previous host. She's not wrong there. Just remember this right here, right? People are working hard to make free content for you. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Peace. And that effectively is when G4 ended. Now, we have this, I believe, from today. What is the date today? The 9th. So yesterday morning from Melissa Mercante. This is um, eerily similar, and you'll see in a second here. You know what I want? <laughs> what you really, really want? <laughs> I want people in the industry to be a little bit louder about people being mean to other people and maybe say it's not a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Maybe say we don't want you around if you're going to be a cunt. <laughs> yeah. And hateful. And that the games industry is diverse naturally. Not because anyone's making them be diverse. Because the world is diverse, you stupid motherfucker. Yeah! <laughs> and it gets better. And if you have a problem with that, come fight me. Physically. <laughs> bitch. Has anyone taken you up on that yet? No, because they're all pussies. Yep. <laughs> you know what so I you want? have a woman who works at Kotaku, supposedly a news outlet, trying to get people to fight her over mean words online, okay? Not to mention, a man cannot consent to fight a woman, at least <laughs> not in with any respectable uh, outcome, because of the fact that that's just frowned upon in our society. So I don't know who she thinks is going to take her up on beating her 90-pound ass. But regardless, Nick Calandra, another games journalist, came to her, you know, uh, defense of this saying yep this is a huge reason why second wins community is as good as it is i've spent countless hours of my time moderating to make our free space of hateful jerks and welcoming to people who are civil respectful and act like adults while having fun now the funny thing is he gets called out on this trying to make it seem like she's being respectful someone goes okay a room full of white people who aren't representative of their audience or the general public telling us how diverse they are you have to realize how bad this looks right another person saying uh, Nick, stop engaging with the edge lord. I don't know, Chief. You can't call me a cunt or tell me to 1v1 you in person. This might not be the best representation of the 2W community I'm part of. I'm no fan of the Gamergate losers, but this post talking about how nice your community is by showing a video of someone that community being hateful and childish is something else. It's insanely hypocritical. Well, she's not selling me on. And these are, these are Nick's fans. These are Nick's followers, okay? Yeah, let's be nice to each other. Post a video of one of the most hateful and arrogant assholes in the industry swearing at people who have different views. Can't make this shit up. Okay. We also have Alyssa Mercante with her feud with uh, JT, Smash JT, using his real name and trying to expose him as some sort of grifter. And the funny thing is these people use his real name over and over and over. The Nick Calandra, the person we talked about previously from Second Wind, was one of the people saying to go after his funding sources several weeks ago. We have to go after these YouTubers' funding sources, right? They even managed to take down his website, and yet luckily he got it back. But Nick Calandra was the basically the force behind that that got Smash JT's website taken down. Now today you have... Uh, Alyssa Mercante, well, I guess yesterday, trying to get people to fight her in person 1v1, saying that they're little pussies that, because they won't. And of course, they're now going after Smash JT, using his real name and trying to get him fired from his job. Okay, this is the level of uh, insanity that we are dealing with with these games journalists, their sycophants, their fans, their simps, if you want to call them that. I think that's basically applicable at this point. So these people are just completely unhinged. Alyssa Mercante might be the worst person I've ever interacted with online 
I'm actually very glad she has me blocked because it makes my timeline a lot nicer. I have to go looking to see these posts because I luckily don't have to see her shit on a daily basis. I mean, I was I was busy with my kids this weekend playing baseball and winning championships and stuff. I didn't have time for any of this silliness. I'm just finding this now at like 930 on a Sunday night. So pretty sick person, to be honest. But let me know your thoughts about all this, guys. Is there any redeeming video game journalism? Are all these people just too far gone to be saved? Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll catch you later. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.